Hello reality viewers, welcome back again to Reality Latest Gist, the home of all latest news. To all my returning subscribers and my new subscribers, God bless you for your massive support to this channel. I want to let you know say for this channel, na reality news now with the drop and with the talk am as it be. This video na two in one video. Try watch until the end. Make you know say Nigeria not belongs to us. It belongs to Fulani Etsme. Right from day one, na Nigeria begin to delete innocent people. But whoever voted Buhari in for the second time, God they judge you. Make we watch this video. Drop your opinion constructively for the comment section. Like our video and also share our videos. Bye for now. I like to do is to take us down the memory lane as an administration when we came. What is the position in terms of the three things we identified? Security, economy, and fighting corruption. How far has this administration performed? The people from the North East, although we are represented by the Emir of Bauchi, but uh, I was expecting the show who were not to be here. He would have told you the correct story. And people from the South South, they would have known what we have achieved as an administration. But in the Northwest, much of it is the same people the same culture, stealing each other's cattle or whatever, killing each other, burning their villages. As a result of that, we had four hours meeting of the Security Council. That is, Minister of Internal Affairs, Minister of Defense, Service Chiefs, Chief of Defense Staff, Inspector General of Police, and the rest of them. And nearly, we gave them clear instructions. One thing that got to the press, which I read myself, was that anybody with AK-47 should be shot. Because AK-47 is supposed to be registered and is only given to security officials. We closed the borders, you know, for how many years? But the, the, the intelligence report I'm getting on a daily basis, those who are conducting the abduction, the killing and so on, still don't seem to be short of arms and ammunition. I see how they attacked police stations, killed the police, ransacked the armory and the magazine. Look at what happened during these answers. What happened to Lagos? I have to dispatch all the ministers. I say constitutionally is what the government is what the government is asked to do. There must be one person at least from each state to be in the executive council. I ask them to go back to see the governors, to see you, traditional institution, to see the ordinary politicians. And then especially to see the youth and tell them that the federal government is saturated, the state government is saturated, the local government is saturated, and nobody will bring a cobble to invest in Nigeria if they keep on making Nigeria insecure. I said that message must be told to the youth. But respectfully, I will say, your appointments are terminal appointments. We, the politicians now, we come and go. But most of you are there until you go finally. So really, I do not envy you very much because you find yourself where you cannot go out. You have to remain where you are. That was why when two governors of Ondo and Oyo State rushed me when there was this crisis in, in several of the forests, I say go back. After leaving secondary school, I joined the military from second lieutenant to general. And I knew you had those processes. 
in each local government and in each locality, there are security council. The traditional leader there, institution, whichever police officer at whichever level will be there. And then if there are hardest or people from other areas which are non-indigenous, they are part of it, this committee was throughout Nigeria. And they used to report up to the state governor. And then the state governor, if there is something more serious, he brought it to the president. I said, go and research, research the security apparatus. The traditional rulers cannot go, leaders cannot go away from wherever they are. So they are permanently in that committee. And then cattle realers or business people or whatever, like the, what, what caused the problem in South Wales recently, they are representing those committees. And of course the Nigerian police will be there. So that security issues are tackled appropriately at, at every level. Now we, we have relaxed. Anything that happens, somebody will run to the presidency. have tried to mention what we are doing. We are going to be very hard on the criminals. The service chiefs have been changed. The ones that succeeded them have been in the system. They know what is wrong. They know the constituencies. They know the people. I said confidence must be restored in governance within the next six weeks. Otherwise, we may be starved because people may not go back to their farms. They have been chased away from their farms. Their houses have been burnt. Their animals have been taken away from them. So they don't even mind dying. But what I said, we have to restate confidence within the next six weeks in people so that people can go back to their land, produce what we eat. I thank you very much. I know your position, I said, is not a very envious and ambitious one. We have a problem, but I assure you we are doing our best. Our best hasn't proved to be good enough, but we are getting desperate, and we are given the orders to the military especially, in six weeks' time, I want to see a difference. As I said, I don't envy your position. I wish all of us the best of luck. Thank you very much. Now, some discussion on the roots of prejudice. All four participants in today's discussion are high school students from Africa. Let me introduce them to you now. From Nigeria, Mohamedou Liman, 18 years old. I am a Mohammedan, and I have prejudices against Christians, too, in southern Nigeria. So you said you have prejudices against Christians in southern Nigeria. Is that particularly because they are Christians? I am a Christian myself, but I have no prejudice against Mohammedans. I rather prejudice against whites. Am I right? Let me no. ask uh, Mohammedu another question. You said at the beginning that you were Mohammedan, that Nini was Christian, that you had some prejudices against Christians. Yeah. Let me ask you a fairly frank question. Do you have any sense that Nini from the Gold Coast is less purely African than you are? Yeah, I often feel that. <laughs> Why? Uh, you see, we in, in Nigeria, and in our part of Nigeria, northern Nigeria, we often feel that um, Africa is for Muslims, not for Christians. It's meant for Muslims. And we, uh, we, our social life is entirely different from the Western ways. We are totally opposed to it because it sort of uh, try to disassociate our uh, religious principles. We and were talking a moment ago about discrimination between white and black. Suppose Nini comes to visit you in Nigeria. Would he be discriminated against in any way? Um, I suppose so, simply because uh, for, for one reason. And I tried to have it northernized and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. In actual fact, what it is is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract.
So that evolve. It's just like a dot in a circle. If they want to exist, they would have no access to anywhere. And the way they are spread all over the country, having businesses, having property, I think Ipop doesn't know what they are talking about. In any case, we say we we'll talk to them in the language they understand. We will organize the police and the military to pursue them. That's what we can do. And we will do it. Let me make some revelations because some of us also have our own intelligence networks. We have met with some of the bandits. We have met with some of their high commanders. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. During this lockdown, there are planes were moving up and down as though there was no lockdown. Moving ammunitions, moving logistics, moving money, and distributing them in different parts of the country. They are already in the south, in the rainforest of the south. They are everywhere. They told us that when they finish these rural killings, they will move to phase two. The phase two is they will go into the urban cities, going from house to house, killing prominent people. I can tell you, this is the game plan. By 2022, they want to start a civil war in Nigeria. Secondly, Sheikh, you talked about a tribal war going on. And uh, I'd like to know more about that tribal war, because I don't know of it.